Hello, Confetti Club. It is Pixie, and we are here in the studio for another little Pixie School Designer Diaries Sew With Me video. Things have definitely been very different since the last time I filmed a school vlog because I was able to go into my school. So all of the footage working on this shirt project is at my house because that's where I've been doing classwork and stuff. We thought we were gonna be allowed back in the school for the final semester, but that's not happening. So we've also been mailed out all of our little like corset making things for the next semester that's only a month long. Yes, I have a whole other semester. I'm not done for summer yet. But this is the final project of our like two big meaty main semesters and it is the shirt project. I showed you guys the process of sewing and designing my pant project. Ooh ooh, two videos, so fun, so nice. And you guys seem to really enjoy that type of video. I get requested all the time to do more sewing content and it is just absolute best of all worlds for me because I get to like knock my schoolwork out of the zone and also get some pixie locks work done. So it's very, very convenient for me and I'm glad you guys like seeing what I'm doing in school. This little cheeky shirt project, there may or may not be a spoiler behind me. Um, currently, as I record this, it's not 100% done, but when you see this video, I'm sure it will be. So let me just go over uh, the requirements for this shirt project and kind of where my inspiration came from, show you some of my early sketches. It's designer time, B-words. Oh, also I'm wearing this wig again because um my roots are bad and I don't have hair dye and this wig came in the mail because I got it for my model to wear the, for the fashion show. So now I'm hiding. So there were a number of requirements that we had to have in our design for like the learning curriculum. Um, we needed a button placket with buttons. I think there was a number of buttons minimum that we needed. Um, button placket, a collar with a stand, sleeves, a uh, cuff and a sleeve placket. I think that's all. And like, that's pretty sick. That's a lot of room to just like run wild. Oh, and also no stretch fabrics, but that's been the case for all our projects, just because it makes life easier when you're learning how to do things for the first time. So I got to sketching. The first thing that we do when we're working on designs, um, I like to word web too. I'll like think of an idea. I call it the party shirt. Um, I also like naming my projects. I had the daisy skirt, the bloomin' pants, and the party shirt. I mean, just call me Angelic Pretty. These are epic titles. I knew I wanted sheer. I was playing around with a yoke and I had had this idea in my head for putting bunting, which is what that type of like triangular, not always triangular, but like party garland banner thing. It's called bunting. And so I had been playing around in my head for a while ways to incorporate bunting on a shirt, on a collar, in jewelry, um, just anywhere that I can stick that happy, happy triangular friend. So I played around with a lot of ideas, especially on the collar. Um, I also toyed with like deep into the process whether I should use chain so that it would kind of like dangle freely, almost like a, a jewelry accent, but many people talked me out of that because yeah, that would be hard to wash and maintain and stuff. But yeah, I think it's cool to see kind of the progress of where the ideas came from to and fro, where did they go? And I ended up settling on this design. Do, 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 do. I will also flash up a picture there so you can see it better. But um, yeah, this is my baby. I already had the blue fun, like sheer glitter fashion fabric. I kind of like, when I travel and go places, I kind of just collect fun fabrics and then I go into my closet and it's like a surprise. So I forget where this beautiful little blue friend came from, but how fun is he? I believe it's an organza. It feels and looks like an organza with this like chunky, chunky glitter on it. And thank God it does not um, shed or scatter really much at all, thank God. And then the pink, I just, again, rummaged through my closet and found something that I had already. The buttons, okay, the buttons aren't on it yet as we speak. I am wearing sweatpants with this look. <laughs> but at least they match the color. <laughs> yeah, so happy, so nice. I just got these from my local little fabric store and they are like pink 
pearlescent. I have a couple other packs as well. I actually didn't film any of the patterning progress of this. I patterned it at school. We started this project on the 11th of March, I believe, or 8th or something around there. It was like a couple of days after we started the shirt project. It was like, okay, work from home forever now. So, um, sadly, I don't have any footage of me patterning it, but I mean, imagine a time lapse of me drawing on some pattern paper. I used my Dartless Slower pattern that I drafted from my personal block and there's no darts in it because I wanted it to be nice and flowy. And I tapered it off to these two kind of pointy tail bits in the center front area so that they can be tied because I wear all of my dress shirts tied at the waist anyway. It is my favorite thing ever. Thank you, thrift stores. I have never ever gotten sick of just thrift store blouses tied up at the waist. That will always be cool for me in any style. So I was like, I'm just gonna make it so that it's made to go into a little tie. And the most exciting thing is probably the sheer yoke and sleeves. Yoke is one of the first fashion terms, like years and years back when I was getting into cosplay and I was trying to read these McCall's patterns, I was like, what the f is a yoke? A yoke is a part of a garment that's usually just put there for style. Think like, uh, it's, it's on the tops of garments, like a yoke on a shirt would be here. There was a yoke on my daisy skirt. It's just kind of a couple centimeters around the top near the waistband. You can also have yokes on pants, same thing. It's just like a style line, nice little stylistic thing. And you can also pivot darts into it and stuff and make it shape your garment, ah, so fun. So I had a yoke, but the yoke didn't shape it. The yoke was literally just like, haha, funny sheer time. Look at my collarbone collar chest tattoos with this shirt ah oh. i also uh, i wanted you to be able to see my tattoos through it i thought that would be so fun i just want glitter 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 on my tattily tattoos the very first thing that i did the first thing i put under the machine was actually the little bunting tabs which you'll see why it's the very first thing that you have to do so if you're assembling just like a regular shirt that doesn't have party banners on it you would first put together the pieces that make up like your front and your other front and your back and since in this case the front is actually a yoke and then a shirt front and then a yoke and then a shirt front and then a back yoke and then a shirt back um you have to make all of those one first and in order to do that i was going to be sandwiching in the bunting in that seam so that's the first thing that i tackled um, I also did that for like another little sewing presentation. So this project really kicked like three birds with one stone. I'm sorry, birds. I made three little baby triangle pattern pieces. And again, for the fabric, I just rummaged and found some things that I thought would be cute. I definitely tried to go in Roy G. Biv order. There's some ginghams and some others. At first, I wanted them all to be different ginghams, um, but I just didn't have blue gingham, purple gingham. And of course, there's no fabric stores or craft stores open right now. So it was like, time to see what I have. But I really, really like how it turned out. I think having like the one solid blue and like the daisy purple, I like how it kind of is a, looks like a little patchwork quilt scrap situation, which it was. I didn't top stitch the bunting. I could have if I had all the time in the world and felt like it, <laughs> but I didn't. For my pink fabric, I rummaged around and I tried to find something that was A, the right tone of pink I wanted, B was not stretchy, and C was lightweight enough so that it would kind of go along with the super, super thin blue sheer. So I didn't want to be sewing like this little lightweight, dainty fashion fabric with like a thick quarter or something that I used for my previous two projects. So this was a lot different. I'm glad that I used varying uh, weights and types of fabric for all my projects because it's helping me learn how to work with them. And I pinned all of the triangle bunting pieces to the pink shirt part first because when you sew the yoke and the shirt, you're sewing opposing seams. So it's like, womp, womp, womp. And you have to be like, uh, what, excuse me? So it's much easier to just like baste and tack down your little applique fun extra things first before trying to menaggle that backwards seam action. <laughs> tack down your bunting first. Like this is a tutorial people are gonna follow. Uh, please don't. I'm trying to make this my career, so probably don't copy my designs. 
So in any case, you would interface certain pieces for the collar, I think the stand, the button band or button placket. When I was researching how to do it, because I needed extra notes, uh, it was called a button band, not a button placket certain places. At my school, we refer to that as the placket, but that's also another thing. So I've realized very quickly that a lot of sewing and garment making terminology is like localized. So if, don't yell at me if you think it's wrong. This is the way that I learned it in school. <laughs> I luckily had some knit interfacing on hand here from buying it at school before the lockdown, so I just ironed that on, cut out my pieces that needed interfacing, and we were ready to rock. So like I said, I started with the shirt fronts and back, kind of making them one, as if I didn't have all these other pattern pieces is how I like to think of it. It's like, first we make the fronts, then we make the back. <laughs> And then I actually surged all of my edges together. So I surge all my pieces first anyway, because th 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 I'm just used to it and it makes it easier to work with. Your pieces aren't gonna fray and it's gonna look as nice on the inside as it is on the out. But since I had all these like bunting edges and all this surging and the two layers of the blue organza-y glittery fabric on the inside, I was fearful that the glitter was gonna make it scratchy on the skin and uncomfortable. So I had like a whole meeting with my teacher talking about like, should I do a Hong Kong finish or should I do like an encased situation? Should I like, bias i don't know should i how are we gonna make this comfy wumpy because i want to actually wear it and um she suggested that i mess with my serger settings and crank her reel up hard and get it nice and narrow with those threads so that all the threads encase any of that scratchy unpleasant edge situation and that's what i did and hey it's like super comfy wumpy so i just surged all my edges together even after surging them before. Probably didn't need to double surge it. But I, I didn't clue into the fact that I was gonna be surging it together afterwards, so, you know. I'm really obsessed with the way the surged hem on that yoke line looks with all the rainbow bunting encased together and then stitched down. Ah, it looks so nice. Oh, it's beautiful! Ah! Sleevey time! So the sleeves didn't have any gathering or any extra volume up near the cap, actually. I had it be like the exact same measurement as the armhole there, and then I just kept it straight and gathered it in. So they are nice, big, puffy, wuffy tube sleeves. Um, this is fun. Again, I just, I, in the drawing, I have it pretty loosey-goosey. There's like a lot of room for your arms to swim around and that's what I like. I want it to be like a window to the arm. And as of right now, the sleeves are not 100 million percent done, but hopefully when you watch this, they will be. And I'll show you how to make a placket. Hi, so guess what? The sleeves aren't gonna be 100% done for this video because I made an unfixable boo-boo. Well, not unfixable, but I'd like to get this video out to you guys hopefully tomorrow. It is 6 p.m. Tuesday night, and we're really hoping to get this video in front of your eyes for Wednesday. Y'all, I somehow sewed the plackets on upside down. The little triangle house is pointing downward to the cuff when it is absolutely supposed to be pointing upward. So I'm gonna flash up the tutorial, like the little notes uh, how-to that I made that I was trying to follow and how to make a placket. Um, this is how you make a placket, but I apparently don't know how to read my own notes but I hope you can imagine what it would be like, but I just think I'd like to get this video in front of you guys, you know, one day. For the collar, I decided to go for a Peter Pan collar moment. Peter Pan collar is just like a curved collar. You guys probably know that. You're searching all of the keywords on friggin' Depop or wherever you are. Um, I realized that I did the color slightly incorrectly with my meeting with my teacher yesterday. Um, technically, you should have an equal extension on both sides of the stand, and then the color point should meet in the middle of the overlap. I made a little boo-boo, but 
I still think it's like wearable. I think it looks okay. I think if you weren't a fashion person or like a garment maker, you probably wouldn't notice. But um, yeah, that was a patterning boo-boo. So don't look at my pattern and copy it. You will make mistakes. But I still like how the collar turned out. Sorta of, kinda, I think it gives the idea of a shirt. And it's also the first shirt like this I've ever made. I remember in high school, there was another girl in my class and we were friends and her mom was a seamstress and she learned from her. And I thought I was the coolest kid making my hot glued together cosplays. And she would post these like immaculately done like pressed button bands with the collar and the buttonholes. And I was just like, queen. <laughs> Give me some of that. I may not be doing the buttons for this video. I probably, you probably won't see the buttons on because my machine does not have the best button mechanism slash I don't know how to work it slash I don't have the little insert machiney kebabby thing that you need to do the buttonhole. So I am going to leave it buttonless until I get back to my school studio and I can use the buttonhole machine there and make sure it is good. Because dude, if I put all this time into this and then I, there were just like disgusting like holes and tears, huh, I've done lots of buttonhole samples that turned out horrifically on scrap fabric. And the thought of doing that to my finished garment makes me want to die. So. Yes, probably no buttonholes, but hey, you can see the buttons. Ooh, just imagine, so nice. This project was probably when I realized I am a lot faster at sewing now than I was a couple months ago. I will admit, maybe I put this project off a little bit. Um, maybe, maybe I was a little bit too deep into the hashtag quarantine life, but um, hey, I realized that I can work way faster and way more efficiently and I can just kind of like bloop, 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 bloop. Um, yeah, I guess we've done like three big main start to finish projects like this where you need a tech pack and a mock-up and the full pattern notched and trued and you give everything to her and it has to be like, if I submitted this to be manufactured by a factory, they would read this and understand it and they would make me 500 T. So in doing those, I guess the, the first time the skirt project, I didn't vlog that one, it was seven weeks. A month and a half of our program was making our first like garment. And I remember the skirt project feeling like it was a year. It felt like that was the whole education. And then the pant project maybe felt like it was like three months. It wasn't, but like just in my brain, if the skirt project felt like it took a year and the pant project felt like it took three months, the shirt project, it felt like this project took like maybe three weeks. Three weeks with lollygagging. So hey, that's like super encouraging. I didn't clue into that at all either until I was like, oh my God, my shirt's like done. It like, oh my God, I didn't have to sit and think and let my brain churn in between each action to make sure it was perfect and that I wasn't making a mistake and I didn't have to seam rip every other, every other move and like sew things on backwards and inside out. Like I'm finally starting to just, you know, come up with an idea and execute it with my newfound skills. Learning! Yay! It's also just so fulfilling. Like Steve was here editing the Animal Crossing video and I was working away sewing and I just kept looking back at the mannequin being like, it's real! It's like, I drew it and then it happened. It's like, oh my god. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, it's just, I just, I don't know. I'm really glad that I continue to feel just overwhelmingly happy and rewarded and proud of like the work I turn out. Even if my pockets look like eggs, <laughs> at least I made a fun little applique pocket, right? And even if my collar isn't meeting at the right spot, it's like, that's my first collar. And I think it looks like a shirt. The bar is low, <laughs> but I'm proud of myself.
enjoyed this video again it's always fun for me to take you guys along with what i'm working on a la school a la fashion a la working towards my dreams it's nice to have something to like pour yourself into to kind of you know immerse yourself in the work and really just like transcend to you know Betsy Johnson land. I don't know why that was the first fashion designer I thought of. <laughs> this video's Speech Confetti Club member is Kawaii Melodies on Twitter, B words, who did. Oh my god, okay. This is all of the looks for my Animal Crossing lookbook, like laid out together, like little buddies. And I just love how cute and pastel and how like anime and happy I look. Oh, the poses are the cutest. I think my favorite pose is probably. The like Isabel look. The I love your the way you draw happy little happy faces. And I love the way you draw happy little happy legs. Thank you so so much for sharing this with me. I love you guys all so so much, and I will see you in the next video, which is not this one because this one's over.